<laughs> Let me turn down my sound effects. <laughs> hey, hey, Gim fam. Happy Monday. Happy early Monday. I hope you have your coffee in hand. I I have mine, but it's all gone. So you'll have to hang in there with me this morning. I am so excited because not only do I have one of my friends and former colleagues with me today, but he's like here in here. person <laughs> in the studio with me. As many of you know, our Amesbury studio or where we normally are is fully under renovation for Creator Camp coming up pretty soon here. So we're uh, we're live on location in the like messier North Andover <laughs> space. So, so thank you so much for being patient with our crazy space. It's all clear in the background, as you know, the, the uh, cone of cleanliness in our background is looking fantastic, but we're staring at lots of cables and, and craziness. But welcome, yeah. welcome to the North Andover space. Thank you, this is great. <laughs> I'm very excited for this conversation. <laughs> I'm super excited to bring this conversation to everyone because I, I think it's one that many of us don't often think about, but we need to because October is Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Yes, it is. And many of us, including certainly me, <laughs> are making all kinds of mistakes in the world of cybersecurity. We all do. Wow. So I'm, yeah, I'm thrilled that you're here to talk with us today about it. Why don't we, you give a quick introduction on who you are, and then we're <laughs> okay. gonna jump into cybersecurity. But if you are watching live or recorded, uh, later, thank you so much for being here with us. You can drop a Q colon in front of any questions that you have related to cybersecurity, privacy, all of this in between. If you have an ECAM question, save that until later. Uh, we're specifically talking cybersecurity today, <laughs> yeah. but uh, but yeah, drop those in and we will we will ask them and answer them live here in the stream. Yeah, this is fun. Uh, thank you for having me. My name is Pavel Wilczynski. I have been in IT for like. 20 something years and in risk management for the last about eight. Now I work for an accounting firm and I started and I'm growing a cybersecurity practice. So I can talk about cybersecurity all day. We awesome. should probably narrow it down a little bit. So I know Katie <laughs> has some questions. Um, yeah, cybersecurity month is coming up. It's not here yet, but I mean, it's like in a month, in a week or it's so. In a week, yeah. And so you will see a lot of content coming out from all over the place, but we need to make sure that we talk about it more often, not just once a year in October. So let's, let's get it going. Yeah, let's let's kick it off. So I think the first question that I have is, where do we get started? So everyone here that is watching and listening is in the live streaming and video production and podcasting space. So we're creating content all the time. We're by and large pretty public and pretty yeah. pretty out there. So what are the what are the top three things that we should be doing right off the get-go if we're not already doing? What, what are the three most important things we should be thinking about? We should be thinking about, uh, there's obviously a lot, but like to narrow it down, you want to, well, first of all, you want to secure accounts. So any account that you have with YouTube, your streaming application, your banking connections, like you want to have complex passwords, and you want to have multi-factor authentication on it. Mm -hmm. It's no joke. It's so easy to crack passwords these days, guest passwords. If you have MFA and you know that it's configured properly, like you don't just get a, a text. Well, text is actually, a lot of people in cybersecurity will say text is not secure because some swap <laughs> and all, but it's better than just yes, allow or not, because yeah. a lot of people don't look where this is coming from geographically, and it's easy to just say yes, and then you realize it wasn't you who generated that. And a lot of people fall victim to that. Mm -hmm. It's called MFA fatigue. And a lot of even big companies fell victim to that, like Cisco, Microsoft, Yikes. Um, NVIDIA, like a lot. And it's, it's been abused a lot. So you want, to have, you want to want to have a complex password, MFA, and pay attention to those prompts. Yeah, the MFA. If you're if you're sitting yeah. here like, wait, what's that? Multi-factor <laughs> authentication, <laughs> and that means that it's not just a password that yes. you're using an additional tool to be able to generate a code sometimes, yeah. or, um, or I think it's usually a code, right? That yeah, it, it's a it's a number. Um, sometimes it will pop on on the screen. It will generate the number for you, and then you have to type in your authenticator app. Um, sometimes it's a, it's a text message or, or an email. You get those from banks all the time when you log in, especially from new device. So you want to have that. You want to have that on, especially if for at least for the new devices. So if you log in on a new computer on a new phone, you want to have that MFA triggered. So if your password gets compromised, if you used it. 
for example, the same password I use for another website that got breached. Your password is out there now. People will take that and try to log into your everything else with your email address. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case and you don't have an MFA, they are already logged in as you. They will change the password. They will kick you out and take your money. <laughs> so if you have an MFA, it, it's just another layer. And layering security is where the game starts. So you want to have a, as many layers as you can within reason. So MFA is just another layer. Yeah. And this exists on almost, I think at this point, every different yeah. website and app that you have. So, you know, as you're, as you're setting up and thinking about your YouTube channel and your LinkedIn and, you know, and, and as Pavel was saying, you're, you know, if you're running a business, which many of you are, mm -hmm. all of your, you know, your business connections, so like your Stripe account going into your Shopify, yeah. all of those, absolutely. You need to go in and set that, uh, set that up if you haven't already. Yep. Sometimes that's called uh, two-factor authentication, so it's like two, yeah, the two number FA. two FA. The point um, is that it's more than one. Yeah, it's, it's more than more one. It's more than a password. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, so that's a, that's, that's a super one. important That's part. like, <laughs> if you take anything out of this conversation, <laughs> this is leave one thing. now and go, no, leave Not it a little that. bit and, and yeah. then go inside Stay all Stay listen to the rest, but if, if there's one thing that you take away from it, MFA is, is it. Mm -hmm. and, and pay attention to those prompts. Uh, number two, um, software updates. So, Software updates are out there for a reason. That usually means that there's a vulnerability in the code mm -hmm. that's been discovered, all already exploited, and the software vendors will go and figure it out and patch it up, and they will send you an update. So when you see a pop-up on your phone, on your computer, uh, or uh, f for the system, or an application that you're using, update that. So mm -hmm. save your work. You may be in the middle of something, like if you're in the middle of, li of live streaming, wait, right? Finish that finish the this, this stream, and then save your work, update your computer, update your phone, the app, whatever it is that it is popping up, update, reboot, apply that, and then just go on with your life. Because if you don't, sometimes that vulnerability can be exploited, and there's been a lot of them lately. Um, there's one, there was a big one a couple of years ago, it was called Log4j. It was a vulnerability, one of the Java applications that Virtually every software that used Java used that. It was a login library that just took the events from the application and logged it away. Mm -hmm. There was a vulnerability that gave remote access. Um, and, and it was a big one. Everybody had issues with that. And everybody applied, up, um, created updates. And uh, believe it or not, there's still some applications that have been, that have updates, but people haven't applied and there's, it's still getting exploited. Uh, there's a lot of them. VMware, yeah. Microsoft Exchange, like there's the big ones. Um, maybe, you know, you don't use VMware because you're a podcaster, but um, <laughs> the point is that if there is an update, yeah. apply it. And a lot of the, you know, so again, all of you that are watching are, be because you're Ecamm users, you are also Mac users. And, you know, there are obviously a ton of updates that are coming out all the time on your phone, on your iPad, on your computer. And as you were saying, most yeah. of those <laughs> include like fixes and security patches yeah. and things like that that are really, really important. So I know that it's always like a little daunting to make those updates, especially if you have, you know, a big important event coming up or, you know, something you're really working on and you don't, you don't want to, you know, mess with any of your software, but add that into your checklist and your plans to just, you know, maybe it's like a week out before your event or before your yeah. next podcast, double check that everything is up to date because it could be that thing that they've updated that is going to save the day on your event yeah. and keep you safe. So it, it is certainly absolutely something that you need to be keeping uh, track of. And certainly with Ecamm as well, you know, we're constantly updating the software. Most of the time it's because it's a, you know, cool new feature that yeah, is in development, <laughs> but a lot, of, a lot of the time it does also include some fixes. So, you know, as you've all been reporting, you know, bugs and issues and things that you've been seeing, you know, Ken and Glenn are, hard at work making those fixes go through. So though, you know, those are all important things that you should be keeping in mind. And thankfully, I don't think we've had any that I can think of like security breaches or any kinds of <laughs> issues there, but, but you know, I, it's still definitely worthwhile to add that into. Yeah. I was going to say like every now and then you'll get a cool new feature of that update. So it's, it's, that's good incentive incentive too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so if you see that pop up, click on it. Update. Uh, unless <laughs> it's, it's something that you didn't expect and it's an, a pop up on the website that says you have an update and you're on the website, there should be no pop-ups. 
then don't click on it because that's a, f- a fishing thing. <laughs> They've been getting really, I will say, like, before you jump into to point number three, and I don't know if, if all of you have experienced this as well, but... They've been getting more and more ridiculous and some of them are like really hard to like to avoid. Like sometimes it it feels like it's a legitimate thing that's coming at you. So that's good. Like pop ups are I've been getting even like text messages from, you know, that are supposed to be from Glenn that are like, you know, Katie, I need to see you right now in my office, which is never anything that my boss says because he doesn't have an office. (laughs) But like things things like that, it's just always really important to to stop for a second and, you know, think, is that how that person would normally be communicating with me? Is that how that company would normally be communicating with me? And just take a moment before you click on something or forward it or, you know, or click a link or anything that they may be wanting you to do. So it. It's worthwhile to be a little bit mean <laughs> for, for a moment. Skeptical. Skeptical. I will say skeptical. So um, social engineering is obviously, you know, a, a huge thing, right? The attackers are very creative. They're very yeah. smart. Uh, that's their livelihood, right? So they come up with these constant new things. But they, one thing that doesn't change is that they usually play on, on our emotions. They, they play on two emotions. It's either greed Mm-hmm. Hey, here's a gift card, or um, you just got an, uh, um, yeah, you won. Uh, you got a raise, <laughs> or you won something, yeah. or fear. Hey, mm-hmm. your uh, paycheck information needs to be updated. Yeah, it's a text or email from a HR, right? Yeah, here's click on this to update, otherwise, you won't get paid this Friday. Like, HR is not gonna do that to you. Um, another f- f- could, could be like, here's a I don't know, FedEx deliver that if you don't click here, you will not get delivered. You may be actually waiting for something, but don't click on that. Yeah. You know, go to your actual Amazon or whatever you, whatever you order that thing. And if you know that it's coming from FedEx, go to FedEx app or website and check that uh, tracking number. Um, fear and greed. <laughs> We're humans. But these are the two things that usually make people put aside the doubtfulness and, and, and click on, and then you realize like, I shouldn't have clicked on that. Mm-hmm. So, um, and if you don't have other layers of defense on your computer or, or your phone, you may, you know, stand to lose a few bucks. Yeah. E- Eden, or at least a lot of time. E- e- Eden says, thanks. and thanks so much for hanging out with us. Eden, Eden says, like, I get the UPS needs to verify your email address. Oh, yeah. All yeah. The time. yeah. Yeah, don't, there's, yeah, you, it's, it is difficult, but um, yeah, FedEx is never, and this is also an important thing. Hey to Paul, who's moderating, it, you know, double check the email addresses of the yeah. people that are coming in. You know, it, a lot of the times, like the email may look really official, and then you look at the email address, and it's like FedEx address info at gmail.com, which yes. is like never going to be FedEx's email address. That's another f- <laughs> thing. So, uh, I was going to talk about social engineering in a little bit, but might as well now. Yeah. So, the from is obviously a big thing, like the email addresses. Sometimes, though, the email is spoofed, and it is actual email that this person is coming from, right? So it will be at FedEx.com, but it's actually spoofed. Yeah. So you want to look for other things, like the sense of urgency that's created in an email, a link, an attachment. Basically, if you didn't expect an email from this particular person or a company, don't click on it. If you get an email from your bank saying, like, update this information, don't click on that email. Go to your bank's website separately, log in with your actual credentials, and go to messages, there's gonna be notifications somewhere. If it's clear, you know that this was phishing email. Mm. Never click on emails and try to log in <laughs> from the email because they will harvest those credentials from you. And again, if you don't have MFA, they will take it and they will log into your bank account. They will take the money before you <laughs> before you log in and they are pretty quick. I hope you are not blindly it, clicking on all the links. Because um, with, with like. they have it automated. It's not even a person doing it. It's just a script yeah. that just does it. And before you know it, you log into your account and it's all zeros. <laughs> Which, you know, if you have business and you yeah. have payroll, it could be, could be a big deal. It could be horrible, so, yeah. Uh, sense of urgency from attachments, links. Um, the bad grammar doesn't really exist anymore. I, I, we're joking that we're not going to talk about AI, but <laughs> here it is. <laughs> so you have really, really well done emails now that yeah. don't, you know, the, the Nigerian prince is gone. Yeah. He's back in the 90s, but now those emails are really well crafted. They're, they're real. Sometimes you will get a recording of a, 
a voicemail that's generated that sounds like Katie, but it's not her. It was just a generated. I will uh, never leave a voicemail because I hate being on the phone. So, so you can rest assured that <laughs> but she loves live streaming. <laughs> it's never a voicemail for me. So yeah. it, it's tricky. So if something doesn't feel right, pick up the phone, call this person, yeah. or email them the normal way. However, you normally communicate with them, contact them. And say like, hey, did you do that? And they will say yes or no. But if you have an invoice to pay <laughs> or shipping that's getting lost, don't click on these things. They are ninety <laughs> percent um, bad bad things that are about to are about to happen. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. And I know, like, I know that you are all in my the same space as me. So we're all using a lot of different apps and tools to get our shows out there, right? Yeah. So obviously we're in the world of Ecamm, we're using YouTube and you know Facebook and X and all these other different platforms that are helping us promote or stream our space. We're also using, you know, all these different like marketing tools. Maybe you're using, you know, Agora Pulse or Hootsuite or any of these other tools to push content out there. Your email tool, there's all these different places. So again, make sure that you have secure passwords. What about like a, and make sure you have multi-factor authentication <laughs> and don't, you know, don't click on anything that's incoming. What about password tools? So like the one password of the world, the, um, you know, all these other different like helpful tools that help make passwords better. Use them. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, you know, you want to have a unique password for every website, every application. Password managers will help you keep track of it. You can create 20 a character password. As long as the platform supports it, you can throw in a password manager and just forget it and then log into it and yeah. pull it out either through a plugin or just copy paste. They will make your life a lot easier because we we can't remember more than a few passwords. Like it's just <laughs> we don't we don't have that space <laughs> in our brain. Uh, may, maybe super smart people with a photographic memory, but like yeah. we're not those people. So password managers are great. Um, there was a breach uh, of um, not one pass, uh, last pass, last pass. That's uh, it. Just a few months ago, uh, they lost some code a while back, and then you. They, lo they lost some keys. So long story short, those passwords that you had there should have been reset. But yeah. they notified people pretty quickly. Um, it's not a reason not to use password managers. Um, it's definitely better to use password manager. And if something is weird, you reset your passwords, than use the same password or five passwords for every platform that you have out there. Um, password managers can also help you with... MFAs and notes and secure notes and things like that. And password, um, sometimes even password sharing. Like I know that we, yeah. so we have a one password account at Ecamm and then it makes it easier for us to be able to, you know, collaborate basically on a lot of these different yeah. tools where it's like, oh, you know, you need access into my blah, blah, blah tool. You know, here I can share yeah. this securely and then I can update my password on the other side. There's all of these kinds of safer ways to be able to collaborate quickly because I know like, I have a really tiny team. Many of you don't even have a team. You're, but you know, you're by yourself. But you're working with contractors or yeah. other members, so it's a safer way to do that. Versus like, I'm just gonna text you my password. Don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't text passwords. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> password managers are better. There, there are other tools that you can send a password securely that will expire in like whatever yeah. you set it to, five minutes, 10 minutes a day, an hour yeah. or whatever. So love, use those things. Don't I just, love Paul says that he's got 1,800 entries in his one password. Yeah, Way to me go, too. Paul. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, so, that's awesome. Yeah, it, it, use those password managers. They're not expensive. Some of them are free. Just use them. It, 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 it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're your friend. All right, I interrupted you. So what was your number three? So we had... Number three, um, backups. 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 And this is hugely important because I see this one all the time. I'm looking at you, Ecamm people. I see this all the time where you're like, I updated Ecamm and, you know, and I lost XYZ thing and I didn't have a backup. And I like, please have backups. Please have backups. Have your backups. And... Make sure that, so, a few things about backups. You want to make sure you back up your things, so like, you, you can use Time Machine, you can use Carbonite, other things. Um, synchronizing your data to Google Drive is not a backup. 
That's just synchronization. So you have a backup of your actual stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, make sure that you back up everything that you need to restore your business, uh, your podcast, your recordings, your client base, your everything else. Uh, and, and test it every now and then. Pretend that something bad happened and go back and see if you can restore it. That's and then you can restore it on time. Because if you have all your gigabytes of data out there in some cloud, but it takes you five days to restore it, it's really not good. Not good enough. Unless you have five days to take off and just go on vacation as this restores, which nobody does. <laughs> um, so invest in the backup solution. There's a thousand and one of them. Uh, some of them are free, some of them are cheap, some of them are more expensive, some of them are faster, slower. Just pick your poison, figure out what you need, what's your budget, what you need, and and, and use it. Because if you click on a bad link and you get ransomware on your computer, your backup is the only way to get it back. Mm -hmm. But if, if it's on your computer, obviously it's also encrypted, so <laughs> have it somewhere else. Yeah. Um, not even on a USB, B drive, but like somewhere else, like in, in a backup solution that will keep you on the cloud that's separate from your computer that can't get infected, the ransomware can jump over. Um, and mm -hmm. then you can restore it. You don't have to, you know, you'll start from scratch. You may lose like a day of data or something like that, but you won't lose everything. Yeah. And you won't have to pay. Because a lot of times if you pay, you still don't get the money. I mean, the data back. So mm. it, you can't. There's no honest thieves anymore out there. There's no, there are no honest thieves out there. <laughs> this is a great so. question that's coming in from George. Uh, George asks if there are any recommended free password managers. What about the the Googles of the world and the I mean, Apples and all the... The browser, Google Chrome, for example, has a password manager in it. I'm sure Safari does too. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't use Macs. <laughs> I don't, I, I'm only Mac, but I only ever use Google Chrome. So, so. <laughs> password manager within the browser is better than nothing at all. You know, so at the same time, if you lose access to your Google account, you lose access to your That's password a good point. vault. Yeah. So keep that in mind. MFA will save you, probably. Uh, but yeah, have your backup emails there and like backup tech, uh, phone numbers so you can get access to your account, especially if that's where your business lives. So yeah. 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 And Paul is saying this, and this is the one that I use as well, but... Um, Paul's using uh, Backblaze plus his local NAS. So yeah, we yeah. use Backblaze here at Ecamm as yeah. well. And it's just nice to like have it there as a security blanket. Although I, I am tempted actually to just like test it and see like how, you know, how, it. yeah, it, like, like I, not before creator camp, but <laughs> after, <laughs> after our event to, to I'm just not kind of wipe your computer yeah. and try to re <laughs> restart it. Just go and see if that data is there. Like yeah. go pick a document that you think you may have you need it yeah. in, 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 uh, in your imagination and go and see if it's there. Go see if the version that you want is there. Yeah. Or, you know, things like that. So just test it. Yeah, test that, it. that's a great idea. Um, the things that you should be doing, uh, educate yourself. Listen to, there's a lot of material on YouTube. There's a ton of podcasts on cybersecurity. Um, on X, on TikTok, there's, there's, there's so many different things and some of them go into details of specific things. Now, some of them are more general. There's just no excuse not to be educated uh, in, in 2023, <laughs> almost 24. Yeah. Um, just, you, you may not know which questions to ask, but just pick a podcast, listen to a couple of things and then you will have questions and then you can, you will have other, other things that... Yeah will pop up and you'll be like, what about this? What about that? And then you just go down this rabbit hole. Just like you do research for your podcast, do that for yourself on <laughs> cybersecurity. Uh, you all are pr probably very good at researching topics. So this is just another one. Or maybe create your own podcast on cybersecurity. Yeah. Like Katie just did here. <laughs> <laughs> so um, education is big. There's a lot of free resources um, online. Some of the governmental agencies like CISA, um, yeah. there's, you know, FBI has a lot of pages on that. And it's great timing because now timing. it's like literally we're going into a promotional month all about this. So yeah. it's, it's well, great timing to just, just to double check 
what your system and your process is, which we've been yeah. talking about a ton across all of our shows. Like what is your system and process and what are the tools and resources that you use? This is another little piece to the puzzle that you need to add in is, you know, what is your, what is your cybersecurity plan? What tools are you using to make sure that you're backing things up correctly? What tools are you using for your multi-factor authentication? What yeah. tools are you using for your password management? Does it all make sense? I know right now, even talking right now, I'll be a hundred percent transparent. I totally suck at this. I have <laughs> Pass, I use one password. I probably don't use it properly or like to the full. I have not spent the, you know, hour that I need to to dive in and make sure that like some of my older passwords are like doubled it passwords. Will show you. Or, yeah. It will show you. Yeah, I need to just sit there passwords. and go through and make all of those updates. And it sucks. It, it's painful to do, but. But it's not, it's less painful than waking up one morning and figuring out that you can't get into your YouTube channel that you yep. just spent six years building or, you know, you're locked out of your email or, or you now have no money left in your bank account. So, right? Or all of these at the same time. Or all of these at the same time. So I think it, it is really hugely, hugely important. Well, yeah. I, I want to talk a little bit about specifically about the kind of podcasting and live streaming space. And we, we chatted a little bit about this right we before did. we jumped on, but you know, we're, we're creating in a way that's kind of in this real time space and we're recording and we have these like large video files. Do you have any recommendations for like, what if something goes wrong? <laughs> what, what if, you know, we've had star heard stories or seen things where, you know, like you feature a troll comment on screen by accident or like you were saying, like what if someone like walks behind and is naked in the background of your scene? Like what, what if something like horribly goes wrong? Is there some, if, are there ways to get your information back, restore accounts? Like how, what do you do if everything goes horribly wrong? Well, I don't have all the answers for this one. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, just like we talked before we went live, like if it's recorded, it's out there. Um, yes, you can stop recording. You can delete the recording yeah. from, from Google, uh, from, from YouTube, from your platform. But there's no guarantee that somebody who was watching it didn't screen grab it. Yeah. They could snag it. Now uh, there's a ton of tools to, to you know, Capture, capture videos, videos from, yeah. from YouTube um, or other platforms, and it's there. You have no influence on that. If you have comments enabled, which you shouldn't, that just go up on the screen without yeah, don't, being moderated. Don't auto anything. <laughs> Always have a moderator. If you don't, yeah, a troll can come up and, and throw up some uh, hate speech or something else that it will be really, really hard and it will... Uh, um, Oh, I mean, it's impossible to take it down, just like with the other aspect that we just talked about. Uh, it could damage your reputation. You know, it could be you've been building this channel for six years or more, and you have this many followers, and this one thing can really, really damage. Some people will understand that it was an accident, that it wasn't you, but... YouTube won't. It's your <laughs> YouTube won't. They will just cancel you. Yeah. And you, you will go through a lot of trouble to get it back. If If... If you'll be successful, I don't know, but um, yeah. So disable the comments, moderate comments. Uh, only you know, put them up there after you look through it. Um, the same with your guests. You know, know who you're inviting, or if if you have calling people, make sure to be able to you know. Do a quick check. Just on the, quick yeah, check. Yeah. Temperature check. Maybe you have a, a button where you can just cut them off, or maybe there's a delay. I don't even know those platforms. Like, do we, can you do that? Maybe there's a second delay. There you know, are for, a couple second delays on so, depending on what platform you're streaming out to, and um, and Eden and Paul are, are reminding me as well. So, uh, Paul, feel free to drop your link in for your band word list. So there are a number of, of settings. And again, this goes back to like your workflows and your checklists yeah. and your process, but there are, you know, a number of settings within platforms like YouTube where, you know, you can have a banned word list so that people aren't able to, you know, to throw out some of those comments that, that you don't want in your stream, right? You should always have a moderator in your stream. If you're, even if it's like, your brother, sister, partner, like coworker, friend, who doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a professional Paul level moderator, but you need to have someone in your stream just making sure that if things get crazy that you're able to, you know, to get someone out of that stream, you absolutely shouldn't be, you know, 
just automatically putting up every single comment because your brain can't move that you, fast and you're, you're asking, you're, for, trouble you're asking for trouble so just people be, abuse it be really careful with that um but yeah banned word list goes uh, a long way having those settings um and being really aware of the settings i so many of us in the in the podcasting space for example and, and really live streaming actually as well there, you know, YouTube, for example, has a number of different settings that you should be aware of the content of your show too, right? So if you're going to be doing a show where you are going to be swearing a lot, or, you know, maybe you're talking about really controversial topics, great. You need to actually notify YouTube about that, right? So you have to let them know that your channel and your content is not suitable for children. You can, you can mark on your podcast host, for example, that, you know, you have explicit content. You, you want to, check all of those correct boxes so that when that goes out, yeah. you're not like, you've, you've let them know in advance that that's the content and you've done everything that you can to protect the end user from, you're matching the expectation with the reality, yeah. right? So that, that's not necessarily cybersecurity, but it's just an important thing yeah. to know yeah. because your channel can get closed down for those kinds of things if you're yeah. not you know, coming, coming clear on that promise. Like if you said you weren't going to swear on your show, but then you do, like you are running a risk of that episode getting removed or getting strikes yeah. or, um, or content guidance. It doesn't, I mean, if, if that's your thing, if you do all the warnings, it doesn't hurt to like on the beginning of the show add that it's going to be explicit. Yeah. Uh, some, there are some podcasts that get really dark and yeah, yeah, all your true crime podcasts. That. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you give a warning that you know minors shouldn't be listening to it, mm -hmm. that you shouldn't be listening to it in the car when we when you drive kids to school, yeah, or something like that, give this warning so people have that that notification, that choice to either listen to the next episode and listen to this later when they're alone. Um, setting expectations is the key. Like you really want to make sure that people know what they will be getting. And yeah, it's not cyber specific, but a little bit on the privacy level. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, um, but yeah, comments you definitely want to moderate. If you can't moderate them, just disable them. Just as, yeah, just then if you can't moderate them, just yeah, don't don't feature them. And you can there are tools within even Ecamm where you can actually ban someone from within Ecamm streaming out. So. Um, just, you know, be, be careful. So you see the little, like I'm looking at it right now, there's like the add to broadcast button and there's the ban button right next to it. So <laughs> if there's someone that's like really losing it and you don't have a moderator or, you know, or your moderator isn't moving fast enough, you do have that ability within Ecamm. That is not the case though for some of the other platforms. So again, important to remember what platforms you're streaming to as well and what all of their rules and privacy and protections are because a platform like Facebook, for example, doesn't have that ability. So, you know, you can't, you can't easily ban. So you do need, you do need to have a moderator in the comments there because it, it does function a little bit differently. Whereas, and then there's other platforms where you can't feature comments on screen for, you know, one reason or another. So it's just good to kind of know where you're streaming to and yeah. what those rules are. Know your tools. Know your tools. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> that's a big one. Um, so at the same time, you need to know your legal obligations and protections. So, mm -hmm. Um, kind of goes back to the, those those um, comments and possible hate speech or other other things. Now, what you can you cannot do. Mm -hmm. um, you can swear, but give notification. You know, mm -hmm. if it's if it's not labeled, if it's a, if the show is not labeled as such, don't don't do these things. Um, so, just know what you can legally do, and some platforms may be different than others. So, kind of ties back to the previous, but. Educate yourself not only on cybersecurity but those legal um, obligations and protections as well. Uh, so in some cases, it will help you to know that you've done it and you didn't do anything wrong. That you had legal right to do that, but mm -hmm. and you protect the law can protect you, but also uh, be against you sometimes. So just <laughs> yeah, it's good to figure it out. Yeah. Um, so in some cases. Uh, you want to use a VPN mm. to protect yourself. Yeah. Uh, so we opened it, you know, we, we said like, you're putting a lot of content out there, you, you have your, your face, your name, your, but in some cases, you may not want to have your real identity out there. Yeah, your face may be there, but your name may not be, you may use a pseudonym, you may somehow um you might be creating content in a in a like in a 
closed membership or behind yeah. a paywall or in a space where, yeah, you don't want it as public. Yeah, yeah so <clears throat> using VPN will help you um, hide your IP address and, and where you're from and all that stuff. So um, that can help you. It, it, maybe not in for maybe that's not for everybody, but it's something to consider um, for some. Yeah, and I will yeah. say, um, and we've again we've talked about this a lot on other streams, but um, but if you have, if you listen to us on other streams, and you <laughs> and you um, and you sign up for a tool called Speedify, Speedify dot com, that is both a, a wizard in helping you get a better internet connection, which is why many of us are like, yes, sign me up for Speedify. It's also a VPN, so if you are already paying for that and using that tool you have the VPN as an option? So it's something you could certainly take a look at, particularly if you're traveling too, right? So we have a lot of like live streamers and content creators who are on the go, they're going to events. So that might be a, a great place where you might not want that information yeah. in public or, you know, you might want to be able to add a, an extra level of security on. So having a VPN is great there, but yeah, yeah just a reminder, if you are already a Speedify customer, you already have it, so <laughs> yeah, might as well. <laughs> At the same token, don't just go out to the internet and try to download a VPN because <laughs> you know, vet it, vet it, make sure it's a solid application. All right, if so it's we paid, will, it's better. We will vet this one. So, speedify.com is, is a great one, and again, helps with your internet as well. So, win win. So, um, one other thing that's kind of you know, for Live streamers, especially like if you are sharing your screen ah, as question. you talk, yeah. um, make sure that you share the things that you want to share, not <laughs> a screen that has your private Gmail or your banking information mm -hmm. or your kids' pictures. Pay attention to that because yeah. once it's out there, it's out there, just like all the other things that we talked about earlier. Um, so uh, before you start streaming, make sure that your other screens are clear, your background is neutral, um, your camera is not gonna capture anything else at the same time, but you make sure that you don't, nothing will just pop up like a, a message notification yeah, from your wife, off. You, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or, or somebody, yeah. you know, cause that's, once it's captured, and it's live, it's out there. It's really hard to, to take it back, um, like we talked about. So that, you know, became a big deal in the early days of pandemic when everybody was on Zoom and not everybody was Zoom savvy. <laughs> yeah, the good, we good learned, way to put it. Yeah. We learned, a lot of people learned from it too, but um, it, it's worth reminding yeah, you know it's been three years or so. Yeah, mo <laughs> yeah, then. most of us are pretty good now about knowing. But I mean, yeah, there, it's like I know a, a lot of people who have those like really cute signs in their home that have like their Wi-Fi information, right? So like, yeah. just like think about what's behind you. Like that's adorable when you have like company coming over and they want to jump on your Wi-Fi really quick and easy. You might not want it like in the background of your yeah. video, right? Especially if it's legible. So yeah, it's it. It definitely is easy, and I thankfully I don't do a ton of sh screen sharing, but I know many of you do, and you know, Ecamm makes it a little bit easier to choose like exactly which tab you're sharing or which software you're sharing, so that you don't see everything, yeah. and you can also you know turn on and off like whether or not you show everything that's on your desktop. So if you're like me and your desktop's kind of cluttered, <laughs> guilty, <laughs> you can isn't? you can actually like click so that it doesn't it just shows your background image and doesn't show your uh, like any of your icons. So just, yeah, again, all things to think about as you're setting up and streaming, yeah. just to, I mean, if anything, just to kind of keep the focus on the content as much as, you know, making sure that people aren't seeing things that might be A, embarrassing, and B, might be a privacy concern. Yeah, like, and yeah. you can, I don't know, you may have some documents with your address. You don't want to broadcast that, right? Yeah. Um, piece yeah. of mail, like, in the back, like, I don't know, like, look back and see what's in the back there. Like you yeah. can have a bookshelf with different things and some of these things may not be something that you want to share. Yeah. Um, or the overhead, the overhead cameras, right? Like, so if your desk is really like cluttered, but you, yeah. you know, you're like doing a stream and someone asks a question and you turn on your overhead camera and you're like, and you have a piece of mail. Like, yeah, it's or notes or, notes, or, or yeah, know. things like that that you don't want to share. Yeah. It's, it's easy. We're, we are putting our lives out there in many ways when we're streaming. Yeah. So it's just important to, to know where your level of privacy is and make sure that you have it all set to yeah. to not go past and step over that line. Yeah. Pay attention to what you're sharing because mm -hmm. once it's out there, it's out there. 
It's internet. Internet <laughs> yeah. doesn't forget. <laughs> it says all your 50 Chrome tabs open. Oh, that's so me. And every time I do a, a live stream where Paul and I do a, a <laughs> monthly office hours, we share a screen there so I can go through like all of the you know, all of the different places where you can connect with us. And I'm, I'm constantly terrified that I'm going to like, something's going to, and not that I, I mean, not that I'm hiding anything, but I'm just constantly, you know, worried that something's going to come through or there's, you know, while, while I'm sharing the Facebook community, someone's going to send me some like crazy message with personal information and yep. that'll pop up. So it's, it's, I think a little bit of terror in that, <laughs> that is a good Less idea. Less is more. Less is more. Less is yes. more. This is absolutely more. <laughs> My gosh, we're like, we're almost at the hour mark. Okay, yeah. We, we time flies by really quickly. If you have a question about cybersecurity, Rich is also in the, in the chat I see here on YouTube and Rich is like a wealth of information in this as well. But um, throw those questions in. We're happy to answer them. We can also come back and answer them later yeah. if you're watching on replay. What, what is the last thing I guess you want people to be thinking of i mean all of these things are yeah obvious it's all connected things. it's all connected, it's all connected so educate yourself pay attention to what you're sharing mfa um passwords update your software check your backups stay safe <laughs> stay safe create i think all of it can be connected in the have have this as part of your day-to-day -day work process yeah so think, it should be as easy your, as turning yeah. on your camera, right? It's like you're keeping yourself safe with yep, all these yep. things. So as you, as you build the process of your day, think about, put yourself in the bad guy's shoes and be like, okay, how can I exploit this? What can I use to dox this person? What can I use to figure out where they live uh, or, you know, get to their email mm -hmm. and redirect those payments from YouTube to your Stripe or Venmo, whatever it might be. Yeah. MFA on everything, people. Yeah. <laughs> like I can't stress it enough. And especially because many of you, you know, like us, you, it's not even just your own information. Many of you have memberships and customers and people, you know, and, you're, and you, yeah. you have a, a, an obligation to keep their information yes. safe as well. So, yeah. you know, it's, it is really, really important to be taking this as seriously as you can. We have a lot yeah. of fun a lot of the time, but this is a serious. Yeah, this, <laughs> it, 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 it gets serious pretty quickly, yeah. you know. So we could talk about it all day. I mean, but <laughs> if you have other questions, you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm not really active on other platforms, but that's okay. Katie can give you my email <laughs> um, privately. Privately, <laughs> when, you, when you send me a message. <laughs> but I'm on LinkedIn. A pretty active, not as active as I should be, but. I'm there. Shoot me a message, uh, connect with me, and uh, we can take it offline. Yeah. O online, yeah. offline. Yeah. And offline. Help, help support each other. You know, one of the things I absolutely love is that we have such a great community. So, you know, if there's questions that come up, you want to uh, drop them into the community, you can, you know, chat back and forth. And like I said, we have other, you know, cybersecurity experts that are part of our community as well. So it's certainly... Those kinds of questions are absolutely important to kind of ask and keep in mind, especially as we go into October. Ask other members yeah. like what they're using, what their password tools are that they're using that they love. You know what tips and tricks that they have. Um, let's keep let's keep each other safe and help keep yeah. each other accountable for all of it. But I really appreciate you coming in today. Thank you. In this was person. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had like five minutes. I know five minutes. Five minutes away. Um, uh, well, yeah. I just want to throw it quickly over here into. Uh, so if you haven't yet already seen, we are doing a Canva workshop. So if you've been like, Hey, I really wish I could design videos better. We got you. <laughs> so swing on over to ecam.tv slash Canva and you can join Bradley. It, this workshop kicks off a week from today and runs four days. Replays are absolutely always available. They're always replays <laughs> if you can't make it live, but uh, it, it's going to be a really fun in-depth workshop. And when you register, all we do is send you reminders um, and the replay videos, and we send you a bunch of bonus content and freebies. So if you um, want the, all that extra stuff, make sure you register. Yeah, no ransomware. No <laughs> ransomware, I promise. No <laughs> ransomware. <laughs> and then uh, later this week in two days, we are doing a really fun 
event on LinkedIn. So uh, hopefully you will all join us. The whole gang here is going to be uh, hanging out on LinkedIn September 27th at 1.30 p.m. Eastern. We're going to just be talking through how we do what we do, all the different shows we have and live streams that we run on a regular basis. We'll be diving into all of those. So uh, hopefully you'll join us. You can swing on over to our LinkedIn, Ecamm LinkedIn page with more information there. Huge thanks to Dan, uh, who is helping us coordinate and run all of this. It's going to be a lot of fun with giveaways and all kinds of u- usual ecam silliness. But uh, thanks so much for hanging out. Maggie says, thanks. This was very helpful. Yay. Thanks, Maggie. <laughs> we had fun too. Hopefully you guys are all, uh, will now spend the rest of the day doing what I'm going to do, which is diving yeah. back into my one password and yep. making sure that I'm safe. October is coming up. There's going to be a ton of content. Read, listen, share. watch, yeah. share, and then do it in November and December and January and every month after that. <laughs> Even if it's the same thing that you're reading again, it's a good reminder. Like, there's not a lot of brand new things that you need to learn, but a lot of things that you have to remind yourself of because it, you're building up this muscle memory about good, good passwords, MFAs, and all this other stuff. Yep. Um, and that's what we want to get to. Just kind of like you get in the car, you click the seat belt. So good passwords like the seatbelt. Absolutely. All right. We will see you all in (laughs) the next stream. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.